well, say what you want, but let me tell you, we we got a we got a new blue blood up in here. I don't think I expected this at all. To tell you the truth, I mean, this is the same person that picked Gonzaga to win for the third year in a row, but it didn't happen, obviously. Instead, it's a team that's probably a blue blood now. That is the UConn Huskies. Dominated throughout the entire tournament. There were many, many surprises again. You know, Purdue getting upset by Fairly Dickinson of all teams. You know, uh, Florida Atlantic getting far. I mean, just the, the, the amount of storylines were endless in regards to that this tournament was definitely something definitely proves that the nil definitely proves that the transfer portal really it it's working it's working you know you didn't expect san diego state of all teams a really old type of team a really defensive type of team that can't really score that much they got to the championship didn't expect that. You didn't expect Kansas, Duke, and Kentucky, you know, to get all knocked out the way that they got knocked out. You just didn't expect that. Didn't expect Texas getting, you know, like this far. Of course, I had Texas like Sweet 16, Elite 8 caliber anyway. So the fact that they made it all the way there, and then they finally hired Rodney Terry, just... That's that's some good stuff, you know. So now, Dan Hurley has put UConn once again back on the map. They are atop the college basketball world once again. On the men's side, anyway. Let's talk about the women's side real quick, because I didn't have as much to say. But, you know, because, I mean, the storylines were very obvious. We were pointing to that Final Four game in particular, Caitlin Clark, Aaliyah Boston, Iowa, South Carolina. We pointed to it, and again, this was the only team that I thought, I thought that Iowa was the only team that could get past South Carolina, and they got past them with ease. You're talking, Caitlin Clark put on a show, and she did that throughout the entire tournament. Until... Until what happened, what was supposed to happen with South Carolina, what was supposed to happen with South Carolina, that's what I kind of thought was going to happen with South Carolina, was that, you know, again, South Carolina was big, physical, could keep Iowa down. That wasn't the SEC team that did it, though. That was Angel Reese and those LSU Tigers. I, I, Friday afternoon, I'm coming back from work. I see, you know, I see several hundred. I see a couple hundred South Carolina fans. They must have, they must have left DFW quite sad. And I know the Tigers are gonna be getting, getting, getting out the alcohol, getting out the alcohol, get, get the cigars ready, get the party ready. You know, Baton Rouge will <laughs> be a party spot for a long, long time. And the, the crazy thing is that uh, she put up over 100, which was insane. So, I did make a post that I'm probably going to be covering a little bit more women's college basketball this upcoming season 2023 through 2024. Um, I saw way more games than it did last year. I saw double the amount, which is, you know, not a lot. I saw at least six to ten games this year, which is, again, not a lot. But it's way more than three to five I did last year. And that, that's saying a lot coming from me. Who's trying to get into the women's game but hasn't been able to. But now, 
Now, I think it's a good time. With Clark probably returning, Reese obviously returning. She's only a sophomore. Um, and again, you know, the women's game likes to have these big matchups like like throughout the season instead of, you know, like early on in the season. Like they'll have them sprinkled in and sprinkled on throughout the entire season instead of, you know, just like towards the beginning. Like the men's, unlike the men's side, you know, like the men's side will only have you know, big matchups like towards the beginning of the season. If there is like a big matchup, you know, in the conference play or something like that, it it, it gets the spotlight. But I mean, uh, uh, I don't really have any other thoughts to nosh on as far as these two tournaments go. Um, I know there were some crazy moments on the women's side as well. Um, that's definitely going to be a package that's going to be completely separate from the rest of the others real soon. That's, I think mean, 9.9 million on ABC, you know, if 2.30 in the afternoon on a Sunday, that, that's real good. Imagine what that would do in prime time. Imagine. So, people know, people want to watch, there's definitely, you know, Haters that use that in quotation marks is probably just, you know, being silly, but it is what it is in regards to, you know, that. And in any case, I'm going to slide on up out of here and let y'all enjoy, you know, you UConn fans anyway, let y'all enjoy, you know, this national championship that you just won. And for the LSU fans, I hope y'all are also enjoying that national championship that she just won. Congrats to both teams. Congrats to all the college basketball teams throughout D2, D3, uh, NAIA. That won championships as well. I know we do. Obviously, I haven't talked about those teams because I, mean, I don't cover D2, D3, and NAIA on this channel. But it is what it is. So, finally, tomorrow. Coming back with this week at indoor football. Coming back right when I get back home, we're going to be talking a lot of indoor and a lot of arena. I, I see some nets. I don't know what the thumbnail is going to be for it. It's probably going to be something crazy. But I'm out of here. Y'all take care. Have a good rest of your night. It's probably midnight on the East Coast somewhere.